Really, in this country, I must say they know how to greet you. I've hardly landed from my boat and they sent me the Cadillac of the father of the nation, Marshal Tito. Well, you'll say that Marshal Tito's no longer among us, but Bruno is. Well, I'm having a nice cup of tea on this lovely island of Brioni, surrounded by the Adriatic Sea in the very heart of Croatia. This is where Marshal Tito received his prestigious guests, presidents, princes, kings and queens. And even today, every personality in the whole world comes to take refuge in this magic site. Now, the zebras sporting behind me were offered by Emperor Haile Selassie to Marshal Tito. Every guest coming here to the island would bring a present. For instance, uh, Indira Gandhi made a gift of elephants. Thus, by dint of receiving all these nice beasts, they finally created a nature reserve on the island. There you see the Temple of Venus, and a local legend says that if two lovers bathe together in the sea, they'll be forever happy and never part. Croatia was in times past a Roman province, and the Romans had developed in it the cultivation of vineyards and olive trees. To attest it, see behind me this many centuries old tree. It's 1,600 years old. And now, let's be on our way to discover the province of Istria. Well, as I was a little thirsty, I decided to make a pause right here, in this estate located at the very heart of Istria. But you must know that Istria and wine is a long-lived love story going back to Roman times. Right now I'm at the home of Marino Markazic, who took over this domain a few years ago, restoring all these houses as they previously were, stone by stone. You obviously guess that he has a passion for wine, and he's set up wonderful cellars, seen to the vineyards. Well, he's carried out all the necessary jobs here. So now we're going to taste a nice little cavola called a Malvoisia. Very nice flavour. Now, about wine and love stories. I do have a lovely story to tell you, a sort of legend going round in Istria. They say that Napoleon, having conquered these lands, which he went through, of course, may have left for dead here one of his warriors. And this warrior was taken care of by a young Istrian maid who nursed him. 
And having taken good care of him, there obviously was a beautiful love story between them. And to thank her, he gave her the secret of champagne, which explains why they make in this area the only sparkling wine of Istria. And this beautiful love story took place near a village that has the very French name of Sauvignac, where I'm taking you now to meet a cook named Nevio. I'll say no more. I'm now with a very nice guy, a Croat, a purebred Croat, called Nevio. He's an innkeeper here, exercising his talents in the middle of Istria's mountains far from the sea. And he serves ten people at table every day. You heard right, five times two, ten meals per day, provided he likes you. Because if he doesn't like you, don't reckon on having a meal. There, my mother's coming. We'll see that. Uh... Ah, well, at last we'll know what's for lunch. Oh, wild salad. Look. Nice little mushrooms. Oh, aren't they beautiful? Mmm, fresh bolitases. Look at this nice slice of bolitas. It makes you hungry. I feel so much like eating, you can't imagine. I'll try to take him inside, because I can't stand it anymore. We must get on to serious things. Nevio. Andiamo? Si. I've convinced him. Not bad, eh? Andiamo. I'm taking him along. Well, when my mouth was watering, I told Nevio, get something ready at once. And he says, I'll prepare a little improvised dish a la Croat by a sleight of hand. Allora, Nevio, che cosa mi vai fare? I asked him what he's going to prepare. Primo piatto che faremo, faremo carpaccio di carne. Prima mettemo un poco de rocula. So we're having a carpaccio. That's nice little beef carpaccio, dried meat. A piece of dried beef, in fact the whole fillet of beef dried. He adds a little arugula rocket that his mother went to get from her kitchen garden earlier. This little sound you hear is because the dried fillet of beef is frozen. The better to cut it up, see. Now he's adding some salt. A little twist of the pepper mill. A nice Croatian olive oil. Believe me, this oil's excellent. Two kinds of vinegar. Now old wine vinegar. And a drop of balsamic vinegar. Just a hint of it. That's due to the Italian influence. Eh, adesso grattiamo un poco di grana padano. A little grana padano, or Parmesan cheese if you prefer. E sopra di tutto. Now this is the final touch. The tuba maniatum Istria. That is the white truffle of Istria. What Italians call the Piemontese diva. And you should know there's plenty of them in Istria. Oh, you can smell it, its flavor. Oh, la la. It's so pleasant. It's not really a very cheap dish. But as they say, poor people are always generous. Bon appetit. I'll soon let you know what it's like. As you can see, it's simple. A little rocket that his mother went to get in her kitchen garden, some dried fillet of beef simply sliced up, some Parmesan cheese, some mystery and olive oil, and that's it, the trick's done. Well, I'm alone now, but not for long. I had the good luck to say I had a hearty appetite, and he said, I'll go to the kitchen to get you some pasta with truffles ready. I couldn't refuse, could I? Prima mettiamo un poco 
cartuffi, solo scaldi da un poco da burro. Well, he melted some butter, grated truffles in it, and now I don't know what he's going to do. Apparently, he's adding some water to it, hot water. Oh, he's added some water to the pasta because it's fresh homemade pasta, and the problem is they dry up very quickly. So he's got some water in which they cooked, which he added to hydrate them. Now he's grated some more fresh truffles. He stirs it well in order to have the pasta well stirred so as to have it well impregnated with the various tastes. And now I'll eat them. A bene. I'll say enough, va bene, because I'll have another helping later, right? I don't want to draw attention to myself. Buon appetito. Grazie. He says bon appetit, but how can I help eating this? If you don't have an appetite with this, you never will have. My God. This is just a little pasta, but not like any other pasta. What if I told you that Croats have a hidden treasure? You'll answer, well, what is it? The Tuba Maniatum Pico. The biggest truffle in the world. It doesn't grow in just any place, of course. You'll find it in Italy, where they call it Tartufo Bianco d'Alba. Well, here in Istria, they have this truffle. And it's a stroke of luck for them, and represents an important economical resource. Now, this truffle has a particular thing about it. It's very garlicky. It has a very strong flavor. You might think you'd forgotten to turn off your gas cooker or that someone in the kitchen is chopping garlic. We do have the Milano Sporum in France too, but this one is said to be the biggest truffle in the world. The Croatians also have the smallest town in the world. It's called Um, and it dates back to the 11th century and has a mayor, a town councillor, and I think we forgot to add the priest. They told me, if you come to Chittanova, don't forget to go and see Milan Dragja, who's a well-known painter. So I came here and couldn't resist the desire to say hello to him. And as I look at his canvases, I feel in them some of that Tuscan or Provençal atmosphere, traveller that I am. Hello, Milan. I look at your paintings, and I find in them a very Tuscan, Mediterranean, Provençal inspiration. Am I wrong? Inspiracija mi je ista. Istarska zemlja, pučka arhitektura, crvena zemlja, sve. Pošto je Istra i Toskana i mediteranske zemlje, ispravila je sličnost. Jedna veza postavila se u slikama. Now, he says that truly enough his source of inspiration is Istria, a Mediterranean region, and that he finds in Istria the very same vegetation, the same light, the same architecture one finds in Provence and in Tuscany. Milan, this house is built with the very finest history and style, like many Venetian palaces, in fact. And when I look at some of your canvases, I have the feeling I see in them that same material. Am I mistaken? Usually this stone is polished and becomes like gold. Milan leaves it in its natural state, rediscovering thus the ochres and red hues of this land of Istria, source of his inspiration.
ih 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 I'm now in the port of Chidanova, and I've just met again Nino, who was waiting for his fisherman to sail in from the open sea. He'll tell us now, what is the menu for lunch? Well, what was the fisherman's catch this morning, Nino? Uh, they only got uh, sea soles. Today, uh, there was no other catch, uh, you see. Uh, now we do them uh, on the grill, yes? To clarify Nino's words, it's obvious that either by the seaside or far inland, one only eats here very simple things. Meat on the grill, all sorts of sausage-like products, fish on the grill. Of course, all that's for our greatest delight, because nowadays what we all look for is simplicity and quality of the product. Well, Nino, what's being fished here other than soles? I've heard you fish plenty of scallops. Well, there were also queen scallops, which tasted better, prepared in a natural way rather than in a more sophisticated way. I'll do some scallops today and we'll see. Well then, he'll be doing a nice few little scallops, but he says there used to be queen scallops, which are more simple and people would cook them too, the Istrian way, called otherwise the Buzura way, is that it? Yes, uh, Buzara. I got it right. Now, while Nino's getting those little soles braised, served with vegetables, I'm going to stroll about the port, and later we'll go to his place to savour those nice, simple delicacies. Now Nino's back from his shopping, see? So we're getting ready for this lunch, a very Istrian, very simple lunch. We'll start with some small sand lobsters that he'll poach, which we'll have as a starter, as Istria's fishermen do. Then we'll have a small sea bream and also a little sar, plus a small mottled fish, the little soles you saw before, and of course some scallops he's brought on his way here, which he'll do the way Istrian fishermen prepare them. That is, with a little white wine, some garlic, a trickle of olive oil, the very simplest way. There, he takes a carrot, cuts it in thin slices, and adds it to the fish. He gets a tomato. He cuts it into bigger pieces. Okay. Now he'll add some garlic. As you see, it's prepared in a very country-like, very natural way. He'll add the lemon when the fish is cooked. Right now he adds a little olive oil on the fish. Adds some white wine. Some Istrian Malmsey wine. Not too much wine on it, so as to avoid the flavor of the wine overcoming that of the fish. That's very clever, wouldn't you say? Now... Yeah, now some white peppercorns to give the dish an extra spicy taste. The dish is now ready to go into the hearth, and we'll find in it the sea bream, the sar, and the mottled fish. He's prepared his small potatoes, as you've seen, he added the carrot, the tomato, garlic, olive oil, and white wine. Salted and peppered it, and now it only has to be cooked. He's about to do that. Lo mettiamo in camera, va bene? There goes. He's just telling me that it will take about half an hour to cook and that when it's ready he'll be getting the pan and putting it directly on the table, meaning we'll be eating with no fuss at all, a la bonne franquette as they say in France, or if you prefer, in all simplicity. 
Now we will prepare as a hot starter some scallops done on the grill the Istrian or fisherman's way. To make them tasty, you use some olive oil on each one of them. A trickle of olive oil, and we add to it some Malmsey wine, some uh, white wine. And let them thus absorb the wine. So he's preparing a nice starter, as Istria's fishermen prepare it. That is, scallops, a trickle of olive oil, white wine, done on embers. He'll season it after with salt and pepper once the scallops are cooked. I prepared a sauce for the scallops. In here, I've got olive oil, white wine, garlic, pepper, and a drop of brandy. Now the final touch for these scallops cooked on embers is a little recipe they created themselves, that is, olive oil, white wine, garlic, pepper, and a hint of brandy, which you'll add when withdrawing them from the hearth. Gentlemen, I'm bringing you some cold fish prepared the Istrian way. Smells good. If you please. Difficult to find a simpler dish, but maybe also difficult to improve on it. There, my journey's coming to an end. Evening softly falling on Rovigno, a fisherman spreading his nets for the night, and I'll be leaving the beautiful land of Croatia. But I do mean to come back, because its people are wonderful and the country most endearing.